Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a small story time and then we're going to get back to it and put this truck back together. So I finally went kind of gone through the events of what I think crushed the head gaskets. So I have one guy comment about how it was tuning and detonation. Uh, the timing's plenty safe. Um, higher compression, pump gas and boost, uh, of course you're going to have problems. That's just part of it. Uh, some things you're not going to tune out of, you just got to turn the boost down. And I'm unwilling to do that. But, I think I figured out what happened why it crushed it. So excessive heat will crush the head gasket. Everything expands and everything gets hot as hell. The head gasket is a spring. Compressed, uncompressed. It should spring back. If you ever take it off and it is the same compressed thickness without it being bolted down, then it got too damn hot. Something crushed it. It being blown out the side, that's detonation or maybe it not having enough actual bite anymore because it's crushed and then a little detonation or a little pre-ignition maybe it was a small thing caused it to do that but also since it's been pushing steam into the crankcase and the pistons were covered in this carbon -y goo crap and the intake was full of crap very well could have been some of that stuff leading to it detonating or pre-ignition and that actually blowing the gasket out but i believe the root cause was that the gaskets were crushed and it was blowing steam into the crankcase but this thing's been together for quite a while so just remembering timelines and things is kind of it's a little foggy but after i built it i drove it for a while and it's been through many different things but at one point i unhooked the heater core i, I bypassed it reason i bypassed it is because it was leaking it didn't leak into the floor I could just tell you turn it on and steam a little bit on the windshield so I didn't really use it much <clears throat> but I could never see any water so I ignored it well I don't really check my oils and waters very often so one day going to work which is a good drive to work and it's 3500 rpms because I'm usually cooking it and even when I lived where I lived before it was still a 30 minute drive pretty much at 3500 all the way there well one day I never really saw it get up on the temp gauge. Now most times it doesn't get on the temp gauge. It just barely crosses the minimum and that's it. As long as you're moving, if it's cool outside, that's all it does. So there's no obvious. If it was pointing in the middle all the time, then I could like, yeah, it was over here or it was over here, but it's always over here, close to minimum. Well, one day I never saw it move. I didn't think much about it until I got to work and when I got off the exit, I hit the brakes pretty hard and then I saw it flash up and then go back down. Which led me to check the water. And when I did, it was so low. It was very low. And I put water in it, and I thought I got away with it. And obviously I got away with it for a long time, but I bet that's about when the steaming issue happened, and I bet that's when it crushed the head gasket. So I don't really think we're going to have a problem from here out. We will once we start increasing the boost, and we'll get into pre-ignition. We're going to get into all those things. And the aluminum heads will definitely solve some of that. More flow, less compression, and aluminum. But I've got the heads. They're at the machinist. I'm. It's out of my hands. I'm still waiting on them. Ain't nothing I can do about it. I don't have that machine. I can't do it myself. So we've got to wait on that. But my truck's been sitting apart with a tarp over the engine outside through all the cold and the rain and condensation. I keep going out wd 40 it. And now it's it's a Sunday and I'm bored. And now that I've kind of put all these pieces together, the heads aren't cracked. These are Jags heads. They have seat inserts instead of that uh, induction hardened seat. So I don't see any cracks. I don't see anything wrong with them. But the intake valves, I'll try to get a decent picture of it. I'm not pulling a valve out. I'm just going to put it back on the truck. The intake valves are blue. It got so freaking hot it turned the valves blue. So all these things, 3,500 RPMs with not enough water to actually hit the temp sensor in the intake, that would uh, that'd probably do it. I'd say that's what caused it to crush the gaskets. So I think if I clean everything up and I put it back together with new gaskets, I'm not going to skim the heads. I'm not going to do any of that. I don't plan on it being together that long. But I've also, another reason is, I, it's the only truck I have. I need to use it as a truck. So I've got to drive to my storage unit, and I want to get my other block so that whenever I get the heads back, I can mock it up on the block sitting here on the table instead of in the truck. 
because I still got to port the intake. I still got to get push rod lengths. I can mock it up with my other cam. Um, I'll have to hunt down a lift or, or two, but that'll be fine. I'd rather do that here on the bench than in the truck. Also, it'd give me a reason to take a little more time and to try to do a little better job than just rush it together. So that's kind of my plan. So today, I'm going to let you come along on this journey. We're just going to clean things up. I've got oven cleaner to clean the heads with and uh, brake clean. And the, I already cleaned the pistons off. They're all clean. There's no, there's no pits in the pistons. There's no signs that actually had a real problem. We just lost the head gasket. And that's not surprised. It's okay. I've got 26 degrees of timing NA. And then I pulled, I think, a, I believe I only pulled a degree. I think at one point I pulled a degree and a half per pound of boost. So we were plenty safe. Plenty safe. Most guys are running 34, 35 on NA. But if you watch the cam video on the dyno, 26 degrees was fine. We might even want a 28. A 28 was a couple horsepower. I'm sure 30 was probably one or two. And you might one or two degrees up to gaining 15 horse, maybe. But to me, that margin of safety having less timing rather than have that 15 horse, that's more important. The way I see it. I had, with the Honda map sensor, it maxes out at 11, 12 PSI. That's where its max is. And I had it at 14 degrees. So that's, you know, that should be fine. Should be. Maybe it wasn't. But, once I got the heads off and saw what the pistons looked like with the carbon and the goo on it, it was like a 16th inch thick paste of carbon it was gross the intake tracks full of it but now that we know that it's been steaming through the crankcase and when it had that's why i had the pcv have the catch can it was sucking all that crap back through the intake besides what was getting past rings and stuff so that's why i do not like having the the, the crankcase ventilation the pcv valve hooked up i don't like that if everything's perfect yeah you're fine but you don't need to be sucking in oil and something that you're pushing this close to the edge so that could very well be what caused our pre-ignition and our issues. But anyway, on the Tim will get done with the heads whenever he gets done. And I'm just trying to make sure I do a little better job to not rush through it. And I need to use my truck. So we're, hopefully nothing else is wrong. And there's I didn't see any cracks in cylinder bores or anything. I could see the one cylinder that was leaking coolant. The intake, but it was just clean. It was a very clean cylinder, and I can almost see where it went from the coolant passage into the head gasket. So I think with well, the cleanup, we'll be fine. But anyway, I'm just going to get to it, and hopefully by 4 o'clock or so, we'll address some issues. I'm going to modify the dual plane a little bit. The uh, I don't like the Hughes adapter, <coughs> and I could be wrong, and I'll show you this later when we get to it. In, in all the dual plane performance books, they tell you to knock down the wall in between the plenums, in between the two planes. Um, in the Chrysler book, in all theirs, it says to knock that thing down to three-eighths of an inch tall. Instead of all the way up, it, it goes from this tall to like that tall. So it can share plane to plane. And with that dual that dual 50 millimeter throttle body, because I don't have the big boy on it right now. Uh, machining mishap knocked a hole in the other one and I haven't felt like messing with it. I really just need to weld it up, clean it up, and call it a day. Then we'll have dual 53 millimeter. Its divider, the Hughes divider, goes down and has a wall all the way down to meet the wall in the dual plane. So you're not sharing. Four cylinders are using one bore, four are using the other. I, I don't think that's beneficial. I don't think that's good in every dyno test I've seen. And I've been around, I've been in the hot rod shop since I was 12 years old. Yeah, I'm 30. So that's, I'm not new to this. Have I done as much of it on my own stuff? No. Lack of money. That's what us hot rodders are doing. I'm not, this isn't a big money YouTube channel. This is my jackass. Goes to work through the week, plays with the stuff on the weekend. So anyway, I've seen enough things. And putting car spacers on one carburetor signal that will help pick up power. We don't have a carburetor. But not only carburetor signal with the right spacer, but also the spacer helps with sharing on dual planes. So I think we're kind of, you know, without being on the dyno, having a different spacer 
and then being able to swap it, I don't know. But I'm going to knock that wall down, and I'm going to take the divider out of the adapter. And uh, I'm also going to port match it. It's really close to the gasket, but it's not perfect. It could use a little more work. So that's my plan, is to uh, get the heads back on, modify the intake a little bit, and get it back together. There may be some stuff on the headers that I might work on. I, uh, they're eBay headers, and they're gasket sleek, so I've got some factory-style gaskets. The factory didn't come with gaskets. Cast manifold straight to head. No gasket. Now, when you have brand new perfect machining, you don't have to have a gasket. It works fine. And I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty damn sure that's solid. But the patterns are different from the cheap headers to the heads. So I don't know if there's a world where it seals without me welding up some corners so that it actually has some material there where it needs to seal. But that's what you get for going cheap. Sometimes you got to spend more time modifying things to make it work right. Also, if you've made it, let's see, that's 11 minutes so far. If you've made it this far, I kind of want to see what you think about whenever I put the aluminum heads on, I think I want to put the long tubes back on it. Not only because of, uh, well, they're bigger. Those are inch and a half inner, I think. I think they're labeled inch and a half or inch and five eighths, but they're inch and a half inner. The long tubes I have are inch and three quarter. But I've been debating moving the turbos from up top and forward because of weight. They're about eight to ten inches in front of the front tire, which means they're lifting the back. Um, most cars, it doesn't matter, and it's not something I have to do. It's not the end of the world. But I'd kind of thought about using the long tubes and putting the turbos under the truck. I don't have to run a scavenge pump and do some other things, but I kind of like the idea of moving that weight back, and it will make it easier and harder to work on. Because right now, pulling the trans, I drop the two down pipes, the trans drops right out. I start putting turbos back there, we got more work to do. But then on the top side, it's easier to work on. So I, I, I don't know if it balances out, but I'm contemplating doing that, and I may. Whenever I do the aluminum heads, I'll mock it up with the long tubes and check it out <coughs> and see if I like it. I don't want to put it in the bed or anything, just under the bed. If I can make it work the way I want, leave my exhaust kind of on there, use my mufflers I have. Um, it's not like it's got filters on it right now, and there should be plenty of room down there. So that's just something I'm thinking about. So let me know what you think. In the end, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but I'm curious if anyone else has tried this or has, or is maybe thinking the same thing. Maybe they got some ideas or some pictures or some links of someone else who's done something similar. But I think moving the weight back, I want to get a set of scales so I can go <clears throat> not like ignorantly silly moving weight, but I just, it really tickles my pickle to play with stuff, mess with the front bumper mess with things and see where the weight goes. I, I like it. It's it's enjoyable for me. <clears throat> anyway, we're done with the rant, so we're going to get to it. I will probably make this an update video because making a video of putting this thing back together after a 13-minute monologue, probably not the best idea. But uh, So we'll make this thing. I'll put this up, and then I'm going to get to it. And uh, keep an eye out for that video, and we're going to get the truck back together so we can keep working on it. I'm, it's been a part for a while now. It's driving me nuts. Well, anyway, if you made it through this, thank you for watching, and look forward to the build video.